Hey folks, everything new under the sun. This is the timeline of the return of the Lord. I need to get some of it updated. I don't know when the seven year period will start. Um, I think we're very close and, and uh, many others agree, although we slightly differ on timelines there. But I think what we do see is the wars and rumors of wars, uh, which almost come, I believe, before the seven year period starts. The seven year period starts at a time when the when an antichrist, a world leader appears, kind of comes out of nowhere and convinces the whole world, all the citizens, to give up their sovereignty, to give up their freedom for some reason, and accept a mark of the beast, uh, uh, some sort of computer chip or something in your right hand or your forehead, so that you can be part of the new uh, world order economic system and be under his control. Now, who would accept that? Well, not many, uh, unless you were absolutely desperate. And I believe that's exactly what happens in the name of your health and safety in the name of medical emergency and World War III and worldwide famine. I believe this is what convinces the nations and the citizens of the nations to give up their sovereignty, to accept uh, anything from the world government because they're so desperate. They're in um, their, you know, maybe World War III has effectively started and nuclear weapons have uh, exploded. It's uh, madness and mayhem and Mad Max on the ground. People are desperate. The world economy has collapsed and there is famine across the world. I think all of this will trigger um, <clears throat> what amounts to basically everybody being so desperate uh, that they will accept a world government, even though right now it's, you know, inconceivable really to most people to give up their uh, country's currency, the U.S. dollar, the Canadian dollar, um, the British pound, etc. It's inconceivable that you would give up your national sovereignty, your freedoms, your national identity. But if <clears throat> absolute catastrophe, uh, chaos, collapse came, the world might be pushed into that because the citizens would have no other choice. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, this build up to uh, world war, uh, which will trigger or be the result of uh, the economic collapse and the famine. One is going to trigger the other um, and they're all they're going to be completely um, basically happening at the same time. And uh, like I say, one, one is going to trigger the other. So let's take a look at what's uh, going on uh, in the world right now. <clears throat> So this is uh, as it relates to um, the great Ukraine counteroffensive. Uh, now, this is Russian propaganda, and I have to uh, qu uh, qualify it with that uh, for uh, social media purposes. Russia says it put down a major Ukrainian offensive hours after it began. So apparently there was a whole bunch of tanks um, and a whole bunch of uh, equipment uh, um, uh, that uh, Ukraine was sending into Russian-controlled uh, Donetsk, uh, and Russia uh, kind of preempted this and took it out. Was this the uh, Great Spring Offensive that they've been declaring is going to happen? Russia's basically saying they, they took out Ukraine's Spring Offensive. Um, this is uh, RT Today, again, uh, you know, a Russian propaganda website, as is all mainstream media. It's all propaganda, folks. There's all a bias. There's all a narrative they're uh, trying to push. Uh, this is Ukraine is well prepared for a counteroffensive. And this is what the top U.S. general says, Mark Milley. And he spoke hours before the offensive that uh, Russia then ultimately uh, took out, destroyed uh, in the prior article here. Uh, so he, he said that they're well prepared just before Russia goes and takes out uh, 250 Ukrainians killed, um, and it included sending six mechanized and two tank battalions to the Russian-controlled Donetsk. So what, what is the truth? Uh, who is in control? Uh, did the counteroffensive start? Did it not start? Did, did Russia basically uh, preempt it and, and completely destroy it? Is Mark Milley uh, just sending <clears throat> you know, good vibes, the warm fuzzies to the world to make, uh, to make people think that Ukraine is, is ready to go? It's crazy, folks. Uh, the you know the information is absolutely opposite on both sides, and I don't believe that there has been any counteroffensive yet. I don't know if they're still trying to put it together or Russia's destroying it as they go. Um, it's incredible. Uh, let me see here. Where was the other one I wanted to take a look at? Uh, yes, this is one of the uh, ones. This is um, <clears throat> Azir Hedge, and. The U.S. officials belatedly confirm NATO weapons used in attacks on Russia. 
So folks, your tax dollars, my tax dollars, weaponry and uh, weaponry purchase with the money that we sent them uh, is attacking Russia and our hardware is attacking Russia. If that ain't World War III, I don't know what is. We've been trying to stay away from our hardware attacking it and, and just sending them money. But now there's uh, videos on the ground that seem to show uh, Hummers um, in uh, in locations. Video released by uh, Russian Defense Ministry shows armored fighting vehicles in the Belgorod region following <clears throat> attack, it says. Um, here is a video. Uh, sorry, here's a video. A uh, video of preparation of RDK militants uh, to break through the border of the Belgorod region. Oops. Uh, it says, the footage shows a convoy of at least six to seven American international Max Pro armored uh, vehicles. And I guess uh, Max Pro, mean, Pro means Hummers. I mean, there's a bunch of Hummers there uh, in this video and other some other six-wheeled uh, vehicles, I guess. Um, so there you go. Uh, is that the case? Is this what uh, uh, Russia just took out? Uh, I don't know. Now, this one's interesting. Uh, RFK. <clears throat> now, he is a, a Democrat running for president. And, uh, of course, uh, he is um, uh, going to discuss his intentions with Elon Musk on Twitter. Uh, but he was banned from, I believe it is Twitter and uh, might even be, f no, it, I think it's in Instagram actually. He was banned, not from Twitter, he was banned from Instagram. Uh, and it, mainly because I believe uh, his views on <clears throat> the thing that happened the last three years and the censorship. He is coming out, he is a, remember he's a lefty, he's a Democrat running for Democrat, for, running for U.S. president and to beat Biden. And uh, he is being deplatformed. The left does not like him. Uh, interesting. Uh, Kennedy, who founded the anti-vaccine charity Children's Health Defense, was strong was a strong early opponent to the COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Now, YouTube, pay attention. I'm reading an article on Zero Hedge, uh, so this is not me speaking. Uh, but he has been heavily censored on social media, and, and i.e., you know, kicked off, censored from. Instagram uh, because his various views and again this is a lefty this is a guy on the left a Democrat and social media is even going after him so uh, boy you talk about the government and the people pushing for this uh, they are not left they are alt left uh, they are uh, you know far left if you will folks who are um, they don't uh, want any voice or reason they don't want anybody you know, in the center, anyone who is uh, maybe looking at both sides of a situation. So RFK, you know, yeah, is he going to turn out like uh, JFK, uh, folks? And you know what that means? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, and what has RFK said? Well, he kind of said the same thing as what uh, Trump has said. He said he will end uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict if he is elected. And that's what Trump said. Trump came out and said, I'm going to end it in a day if, if I get elected. So, interesting. Uh, they don't like this guy. Why? Because he's taken away all the money from the, all the people that are making a lot of money uh, in that situation. <clears throat> Let's look at, uh, that's not what I wanted to look at. Um, the IDF, uh, Israel, Iran, talking about wars, rumors of wars, specifically the build-up to Isaiah 17, destruction of Damascus, and then onwards to the uh, war of Gog, Magog, the Ezekiel, 38 war, which I think happens after the United States is either tired of fighting uh, Russia or, uh, uh, you know, uh, is unable to fight Russia because of economic collapse, because of something happens in the world, because of maybe um, electromagnetic pulse or some other way they're taking out. Seems to me they're just going to bow out and say, we're not interested in supporting Israel during that period. Regardless, um, they appear to not be doing anything. Uh, the young lines of Tarshish in the passage um, is really just saying a bunch of words to the invaders of Israel, but not actually coming to the defense of Israel. And and that's important. Um, uh, Israel notches up preparations. Oops, you can't see that. Israel notches up preparations for hitting, hitting Iran's nuclear sites. No nod from the U.S. So the U.S. is not interested uh, in Israel going to war with Iran right now. <clears throat> so again, Ezekiel 38 and 39 <clears throat> where it declares the young lines of Tarshish are simply saying words, but not coming to the defense of Israel. Is this basically the immediate lead-up uh, prior to 
that war. And I think we're very close to that. Israel's very ready. Uh, Iran is very ready for, to uh, create nuclear weapons. Uh, they can make five of them, I believe, right now, based on the amount of fissile material that <clears throat> they've um, uh, created. Uh, and the U.S. has no interest. Uh, certainly with this administration, there's no interest, and there's a couple more years of Biden in power. So, it, you know, if the timeline really is short to uh, nuclear weapons uh, and they become an existential threat to Israel, which uh, effectively it is, Israel's going to need to act alone. And that means no nod from Biden uh, to attack and no help from Biden. And no help from Biden <clears throat> in Ezekiel 38 and 39 either on that timeline. All of which, at this point at least, I speculate happens prior to uh, the Antichrist coming on the scene. I think the world and the situation gets to a fevered pitch uh, where the whole world is in shambles in World War III, economic collapse and chaos and, and famine, that the whole world will accept a single world leader who comes into power and says, you know what, uh, you need to give up all your freedom, all your sovereignty, all your money to the world government, accept the mark of the beast. He's not going to call it that, by the way. And, uh, and you can be part of the economic system, and you can have a little bit of food. And the world will accept it, accept it because they will be desperate. Uh, IDF attacked a secret Iranian weapons factory in Syria. Now, talk about Psalm 83, which uh, uh, describes the time when Israel takes out uh, an inner circle of neighbors, and then there's a, 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 a section describing an outer circle. If they were to go with Iran, the strategy will be to take out the inner circle of enemy combatants so that when they start the larger war there's not people directly on their border lobbing uh, uh, missiles at them uh, rockets and so that Ezekiel 80 or sorry uh, Psalm 83 war could very well happen as a lead up to um, uh, Isaiah 17 destruction of Damascus and as a lead up to the greater uh, uh, Ezekiel 38 war and so here they are taking out secret Iranian weapon factories in Syria. Again, this, this will be considered kind of the inner, inner ring, I think. Uh, you need to take out uh, the militants and the weapons in Syria before you wage war against Iran on Iran's uh, land in their country because you don't want you know all these weapons very close to your borders. When the real war starts, you want a little bit of buffer zone, right? So it makes sense that they're going after it, and they are. And at the moment, Russia is allowing it. Russia has air defenses in Syria, um, but uh, Russia seems to, again, uh, and has been, allowing uh, many strikes by Israel because there is some agreement there. But the, what was said months ago was that, <clears throat> you know, Russia doesn't want Israel to support Ukraine. And if Israel started supporting Ukraine, uh, very quickly Russia, uh, Russia would... Um, probably shut down the uh, the skies over Syria, or at least attempt that. And that would force Israel's hand, because Israel couldn't then take care of business in uh, Syria uh, to take uh, out all the uh, weapon stores, the, uh, the secret facilities, preemptively. So there's a lot of things, there's a lot of balls in the air in terms of juggling all the, the world uh, situation, the things that are going on, little geo, a lot of geopolitical um, machinations happening. Things, things occurring that are going to shift. And uh, as soon as one uh, domino falls, the rest are going to fall quickly. So uh, if Israel decides to help Ukraine at the last moment or, or, or um, you know, participate in that against Russia, Russia is quickly going to say, you know what, you know, f forget it in Syria. You can't bomb anymore. And it's going to deploy all its air defense against uh, Israeli uh, jets. And uh, then you basically have uh, a setup for another war. And it appears as such uh, that Russia, along with Turkey, uh, you know, marches into Israel at that uh, point in time. So interesting stuff going on uh, and incredible stuff in the Middle East, all under the cloud and really under the guise of you know, the, the Russia-Ukraine conflict. And, uh, you know, the one uh, thing that we've all forgot about is China-Taiwan. It's kind of simmered down for now in terms of Western media coverage of it. But that's still an ongoing situation. And, it's, and uh, you know, just one more theater active theater of war in this world. And the Bible says there's going to be wars and rumors of wars, uh, conflicts between kingdoms and nations. And it's only ever escalating at this point. So folks, I think we're close. We're getting there. I don't know exactly when it starts, but uh, you can see everything being teed up for an antichrist, a world government to come into power, to take all our freedom, all our sovereignty. And really enter into that first three and a half years, which is going to be 
uh, miserable for the world, uh, unspeakably miserable and hard times. Uh, even for the Christian, I believe we're going to be there for that. We won't be here for the wrath of God, but we'll, we will be here for the wrath of Satan, if you will, and the consequences of the sin of mankind in this world. And so you ain't seen nothing yet. Uh, it gets uh, very bad. I don't know when. I hope it doesn't come for the next 50 years. But, you know, for the sake of my kids, I hope it doesn't come for the next 100 years. Uh, but I I think we're running out of time, and uh, time is very short. Thanks for watching. We'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.